Hi everybody, uh, this is another COVID-19 update, a pet parent update. My name is Dr. Shibley. I wanted to share with you just something that I've received in the last three hours in my inbox, uh, a message from the Queensland Chief Veterinary Officer, Dr. Alison Crook. Um, what I will share with you, I'm just gonna highlight a few things and we'll run through this fairly quickly, um, that COVID is a disease of people, its continued global spread is due to transmission between people, and there is no evidence that animals are responsible for this ongoing spread, okay? Yes, some coronaviruses infect animals, and some infect people, and some are zoonotic, which means they can pass between people and animals, but not COVID-19, okay? There is evidence to suggest that it did emerge from an animal source, possibly a bat, and transferred to an intermediate animal species before it was transmitted to an infected person. And look, there, there is suggestion that we need to understand more about this coronavirus. And obviously, there's a lot of research which is happening all the time. But what's really super duper important right now is that because there's no evidence that animals are responsible for the continued spread to people, then there is no reason at all for anybody to be taking measures against animals that could impact their welfare, okay? And um, to date, no COVID has been reported. So COVID has not been reported in domestic animals, livestock or wildlife in Australia, okay? A lot of people have heard about the pet dogs in Hong Kong that tested positive, but again, there was no evidence that the virus can be transmitted from a domestic animal to a person or between domestic animals. Now, another thing I wanted to share with you from this email is uh, this bit here, caring for animals. Okay, this is something really important as well. Whoops. Animal, anyone responsible for caring for animals should develop a plan to ensure their animal's welfare in the event that COVID-19 affects their ability to care for their animals. Animal owners should review and update this plan as the situation changes. Now, I'm just going to flick to the official government site. They, they, um, she's directing us to the Queensland government's website. So I'm just going to jump to that right now and share that with you. Um, COVID-19 and animals. Again, there's a bit of a repeat here about transmission and the fact that there are no there's there's no proof that uh, animals are involved at all in the spread, and so there's no need to worry about this. Um, I'll highlight this little section here. Animal owners should always use good hygiene practices, including washing their hands before and after touching animals, food or equipment. Producers are encouraged to implement a biosecurity plan, but I guess we're not really talking about producers. What I'm really talking to are the pet parents and how to care for your animals during COVID-19. Okay, so what's really important here, guys, they talk about having a plan that we have to review and update as the situation changes. And here's what your plan should cover. One, basic feed and care arrangements for your animal. Okay, um, more than one animal, make sure you have enough food. And they've got that as a second point. How will you be able to secure sufficient feed to get through a possible self-isolation period? Okay, again, we're not talking about panic buying. We're not talking about filling up your garage, but we are talking about having enough food for a possible self-isolation period. The problem is we don't really know how long that might be for, but we could assume if it's like other countries, then they're looking at a two, maybe three week lockdown period. So have you got enough to get you through? I would say a month. And a month, guys, let's be real. Most bags of food, a little bag would last you a month anyway, depending on what sort of animal you're feeding. Um, but it's we're not talking about hoarding large amounts of food and making causing supply chain issues, which by the way, is not an issue at the moment. We have not experienced any supply chain issues within any of the veterinary products or parasite control or food. So uh, the third point here, who will look after your animals if you become sick and can no longer care for them appropriately? Guys, we are seeing this from people in isolation, uh, people who are unable to have their animals, who can't bring their animals in directly, they're having friends or family bring their, their pets over, or they're arranging for vets to attend and visit them at their house or rather in their garden, and obviously not come into contact with the people, but be able to deal, the, treat the pets um, or deal with any concerns they have by talking to them face to face, but 
uh, handling their pets and, and maintaining social distance. So that's really important. Contact details for your local vet and the emergency veterinary clinic. Now guys, at this time, your local vets are all open. Okay, vets have been deemed as, as essential services and therefore we are still open. However, if things go the same way they did as the US, we might find that general practitioner vets or your GP vets might be shut and only emergency centers will be open. Okay, now I'm not saying this to freak anyone out, but just to say, if you are thinking that there might be something that your general vet can handle by having access to your pet's records, because remember, most of your records will not be uh, um, accessed by, well, they, they, sh they won't be accessed by an emergency center. Therefore, if your pet has a chronic medical condition, uh, an ongoing disease or something that has a long history to it, and those records are at your vet, then it's really important that you see your vet and you have them deal with these things before a potential shutdown. And I'm saying potential. We don't know if it'll happen, but we need to be prepared. That's what this whole thing's about, is having a plan, being prepared. Also, how to secure any medications that are required for your animals. Again, don't panic buy. Don't stock up a year's worth of medication. You know, some of it might even go out of date. I heard a crazy story from uh, one of the, um, the food reps. They were telling me that somebody bought 12 bags of 12 kilo dog food. And, uh, you know, that's obviously overbuying. And I'm sure half of that is going to go out of date and become moldy long before he gets to use it. So please don't do that. But what we are talking about um, is something like this. Working with your vet if your animals require critical ongoing or long-term medication, being mindful that vet clinics may also be affected by COVID and uh, operating at a different level of service, op opening hours, services provided, etc. And your vet will be able to advise you of alternatives if they are not in a position to see or treat your animal to ensure the continuity of veterinary care. Now guys, what is happening uh, specifically within our clinics is um, we are still maintaining normal opening hours and all the services are still the same. We're still seeing routine procedures, desexings, vaccines, et cetera, et cetera, but we are maintaining significant social distancing. You will find a little barrier at the front door. You'll find communication there about how to get in touch with us by a phone or ringing a doorbell, and the team will come out and discuss with you any of your concerns, find out the history of what's going on, um, any relevant information about the things that you're feeding, parasite prevention, et cetera, et cetera. And then we will be able to take your pet over to the back, giving them lots of cuddles along the way and give them the necessary treatment or, or diagnostic testing that we need to perform. And then we can discuss that with you, usually by a, a, video, a video communication with you outside or over the phone, whichever works best. And, and look, you're just outside. So even face to face is not difficult, but we're maintaining social distancing. Now, uh, a couple of other things just to make mention of. If you are sick, it's always best to avoid contact with animals as a general precaution. OK, if you are confirmed to have COVID, you must follow the directions given to you by health authorities. Don't breach those directions, even to take your animal to a vet if they are sick. If your animal becomes sick and needs help, phone your vet for advice. OK, guys, we have treated people who are in isolation. Uh, thankfully, we haven't had to um, uh, treat anybody who has had COVID um, particularly, but there are some things there. There are some measures in place that we can look at. And certainly um, there are protocols and procedures. It's probably too much to get into at this time, but certainly there are measures that we take in terms of bathing animals and the PPE, you know, protective personal equipment that we need to wear in order to deal with patients animal patients who may have been in contact with a COVID positive patient, person, human. Um, but certainly that animal itself, there's again, no, no proven evidence to support the fact that that animal will transmit the disease. We're just taking extra precaution. Okay. So just a quick update to let you know where we're at. Um, fresh off, off the press. And if you, if anybody needs any more information or would like to know about COVID or anything else, guys, one of the uh, I guess, possible problems we could see that could happen during the COVID pandemic is that everything else gets overshadowed by COVID 
and we've kind of got our blinkers on. We're only worried about COVID and looking out for COVID, but we need to remember there's a whole heap of other disease and, and you know parasites and things like that, which can trouble our pets on a daily basis. And it's really important not to just be thinking about COVID, but think about all the other signs as well. And if you see anything at all wrong with your pet, please just reach out to us. Like I said, our clinics are fully functional with everybody you know, still doing what they were doing before. We're just taking extra precautions to keep us safe and to keep you safe for as long as possible. Now, the other thing that we are introducing as well is online telemedicine consultations where you can literally contact the clinic and um, by phone, just as the way you would normally book an appointment or an online booking the way you would normally do online. Um, but instead of having a face-to-face -face consultation in the clinic, you can arrange for an online appointment where we can have a, a teleconference or a video conference with you regarding your pet and you can hold your phone up and show us what's going on or take, us, take some photos or send us a video, tell us what's going on and we can advise you on that. There are limitations as to what we can do and what we can say that have been in place by the Veterinary Surgeons Board of Queensland. And a lot of these are to protect your pet and to stop misdiagnosing. So ultimately we can give you advice as to whether something needs to come in or not. And if, if it doesn't need to come in, fantastic. It saved you a trip and saved you, uh, you know, some cost and some potential risk from going out. Um, but if your pet does need to be seen, at least we can give you that advice straight away. And you don't need to sit at home umming and ahhing and wondering about whether it is or isn't important. And remember, we've got your records and we know your pet's history. And so if we know they've had a particular type of lump removed in the past or based on their breed disposition that they are predisposed to a certain condition or based on the history that they're on some medication therefore if you see this particular sign it does mean something serious we're going to be able to advise you appropriately rather than going to a, a random emergency center or other sort of online provider what's going to be important is contacting the, the vet that has your records um, so if anyone has any questions please just reach out uh, you know our contact numbers and Facebook pages and certainly um, be in touch with us through Facebook, through Messenger, email, phone, whatever works for you at this time. The important thing is to stay connected and stay aware. Be safe. We'll talk soon.